Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm Valerie and I'm DM and today we are going to discuss the different types of breast surgeries you may have once you've been di diagnosed with breast cancer. Okay so once you have a diagnosis of breast cancer you will meet with the surgeon and you will discuss with the surgeon um, the different uh, possibilities for your surgery. Now that decision is made on many factors so we will take a look at your age your past medical history, including the fact or not that you have a genetic mutation. We will also see the extent of your pathology and we'll see what your personal preferences are. Mm -hmm. And I think this is important for patients to know because sometimes, depending on all those factors, there is only one option and you right. don't have many to choose from. But sometimes the surgeon may suggest different options, each with its pros and its cons. Right. And it's important for patient to know this in advance so that they can take a decision. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that depending on their decision, the um, planning of all the other treatments can also differ from right. that decision. Right. Okay, so um, let's, let's first uh, start with uh, discussing breast conserving therapy. So can you tell us what this is? So breast conserving therapies or surgeries are basically surgeries whereby we remove the tumor and the tissue around it, but we actually keep most of your original breast. And the surgeons in this case can uh, suggest something like a lumpectomy, a partial mastectomy, or a quadrantectomy, mm -hmm. which are all variations on the same surgery, except that the extent of the surgery might be a little bit more. But most of your breasts is kept. Right. And I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's important to mention that whenever a patient or a woman has breast conserving therapy, it's always associated with radiation. Is that right? Yes. So, in, except in very, very rare cases where the tumor is very small and the patient is very old, I always tell my patient that when we keep the breast, that means that they will have a course of radiation therapy comes together. Afterwards. Yes. It's non-negotiable. Exactly. Okay. So um, tell us how the breast conserving surgery is done. So the breast conserving surgery usually is a day surgery. You come in the morning and you leave the same day. You're being um, rolled into the OR and in the OR, the surgeon will identify where your tumor is situated, make a small incision over it and remove the tumor. Mm -hmm. Now remember that when the surgeon removes the tumor, they always remove the tumor, but they also remove a rim of normal tissue around the tumor to make sure that all of the disease is clear. Mm -hmm. Now this is called a margin. Okay. So, um, so we've talked about uh, how the procedure is done. So are there a scenario where um, even though you've taken that safety margin around, um, the, around the, the lesion, that um, patients may need to come back for more surgery? Yes. So when we take out the safety margin, you have to remember that we take it out based upon the feeling and the films or the, the imaging, imaging. Uh, information that we have. But obviously, microscopically, the lesion grows more like in a star kind of way. So sometimes, once the, the, the specimen is sent to the pathologist and the pathologist analyzes it, he or she can find that there's microscopically tumor that comes very close to the area that we cut or almost touches it. So patients have to be aware that there's a risk that we mm -hmm. need to come back in and remove a little bit more tissue. Statistically, this is about 20%. So I always tell it's one out of five patients. Okay, okay, that's really important to know. Yeah. So what are the indications for breast conserving uh, surgery? So breast conserving surgery is used when the tumor is small and most of the time the tumor has to be small compared to your breast as well. Right. So that we right. have enough breast tissue to have a um, acceptable aesthetic result at the end. Exactly. And also when your lesion is uh, uni, uh, unicentric. So your lesion has to be only in one area of your breast. It's, if it's in multiple areas of your breast, 
this will not be possible. Okay. Um, and so, so you talked to us about how the surgery is done. What are the possible risks and complications of breast conserving surgery? So the risks are actually quite minimal for okay. breast conserving surgery. Um, obviously, it is a clean surgery. We don't go into any um, cavity that are dirty, like bowel, uh, like or, bowel like that. or sinuses. Yeah. Right. And the other thing is that the breast has some blood flow, but it doesn't have any major vessels. So the two main risks for breast uh, conserving therapies are bleeding and infection, mm -hmm. but they're quite low. Okay. You are also put under uh, general anesthesia. So depending on your general medical con uh, condition, you may have uh, a risk associated with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but the procedure in itself is not very long. So right. the risk is, is still slim. And the third thing that patients need to remember is that we do remove a portion of your breast. So after the removal, you may have a bit of dimpling or a defect. Mm -hmm. And this defect can actually get uh, worse after a course of radiation. And that's, I think, really important to mention because um, I see a lot of these women after they have had radiation therapy and there's a, a, dim, a divot in the breast that they want to get fixed. And they, al they always say, well, you know, after the, the surgery, everything looked perfect. And that, that is the case most of the time, except that the radiation will kind of shrink all the tissue. Um, and so that's where the dimpling can occur. And that may be several years after the surgery was done. It, it doesn't necessarily happen in the, the year after uh, the radiation is finished. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think the other thing that patients need to remember is that your breast reacts kind of in the same way as when you have a, uh, an injury. So imagine when you wear new shoes and you have a blister, right? Mm -hmm. So when you do the surgery on the breast, it's kind of like a, bl a big blister. Mm -hmm. So right after the surgery, the breast often will fill the cavity with blister liquid or mm -hmm. lymph, lymph, um, right. lymphatic liquid. And what happens is after a certain time, your body will do its job it will absorb all of that liquid and will leave you with mm -hmm. a defect. Mm -hmm. So you're right, right after the surgery, the patient comes back one week or two weeks after mm -hmm. the surgery and they're like, wow, yeah. like I don't see any difference. Right. And then right. a couple of months afterwards, they look at their breast and they're like, oh my God, why like, has it what disappeared? Happened? What right. happened? And that is what happened. Exactly. So we've discussed the, 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 how the surgery is done. Um, now, is there, are there scenarios where, let's say the tumor is, not, is small and we cannot feel it? So how, how do you know where it's located at the time of surgery? Okay, so obviously there are cases where we don't feel your tumor um, and we don't feel the lump and we don't know where it is or we actually know where it is from the information we get from imaging, but we don't clinically you feel know it, it on is. the breast. That means on the day of the surgery, you need to have what we call a localization procedure. Um, and this can be done the morning of your surgery or a couple of days before your surgery. Okay. Now, and what, what types of localization procedures uh, are there? So there's two types okay. of localization procedure. The first one is the wire localization and the second one is a radioactive seed. So can you show us what the wire looks like? Yes, so I have an example of a wire here. So I'm going to uh, hold it under my chest so you can see it. But if you can see it, it's like a very small thin thread of metal inserted in a needle. And what happens is that on the day of your surgery, your radiologist will image, will visualize where your tumor is, insert the needle into your tumor and leave this wire behind. So this wire actually comes out of your breast it's put into a dressing, so it's hidden away. And when your surgeon removes the dressing at the time of the surgery, the wire basically marks the spot for the surgeon to actually go and remove your tumor. Okay. Um, and so what about um, the seed localization? Yeah, it's like a little chip 
that is about the size of half a grain of rice mm -hmm. and it's inserted the exact same way under imaging guidance under local anesthesia under local anesthesia into your tumor and so because there's not a wire that comes out of your breast this can be done a couple of days before your surgery and it's probably the main advantage for patients because uh, they don't have an extra step to go through on the day of the surgery where they're right. actually very stressed, right? Right. Um, and so once you've had that chip inserted on the day of the surgery, you go to the OR and the surgeon, instead of using imaging, will use a probe. And this probe is a probe that detects radioactivity and it will basically show kind of like a treasure hunting. You know, yeah. you just go do yeah, yeah. and then you hear the sound and they, that will identify where the tumor needs to be removed and the, the incision made. Got it. Okay, okay. That's, that's uh, very helpful information. We know there are two types of uh, localization procedures. So can the patient actually choose one over the other? Actually, no. Okay. Unfortunately, um, I think the type of localization procedure that you may have depends on the center. The hospital that, where that you're at. You go to. Okay. Exactly, because not all hospitals are approved for the protocol for the radioactive seed yet because um, obviously it has radioactivity in right. it. Right. So now more and more hospitals are gonna have it, but for now- It's not available everywhere. Exactly. Okay. And the other thing that patients need to remember is that regardless of the type of localization you may have, um, the outcome or the quality of your surgery is not related to right. that. So they're both equally as good. It's just that one has something sticking out of your breast and the other doesn't. Exactly. Okay, very good. So in the cases where breast conservation therapy cannot be done, let's say a tumor is bigger or something like this, what are the uh, surgical options? Sometimes the pathology that you have does not allow you to have to keep your breast. And in those cases, you will need to have the whole of the breast removed, and we call that a total mastectomy. So the okay. breast tissue is completely removed. Now, there are different types of total mastectomy. You may have a simple mastectomy in which the breast is removed and you don't have anything else. You're left with a flat chest. Mm -hmm. But you also have, in a case where the patient would like to have a reconstruction, you may have what we call a skin sparing or a nipple sparing mastectomy. Okay. So what are the differences between uh, the types of mastectomies? Okay, so the differences between the types of mastectomy is basically the, the extent of the envelope that we remove okay. because the content is the same. Mm -hmm. So in all of those cases, all of the breast tissue re is removed. So your breast tissue goes from your collarbone to the inferior crease of your breast and from the midline to your lateral chest line here. So in all of those cases, what is removed is the same. Now, the difference is how much of the envelope we remove. In a simple mastectomy, we will remove the nipple, the areola, and you will be in a bit of the skin as well. So when you come out of the surgery, you're left with a flat chest mm -hmm. and a line that comes across mm -hmm. your, your chest area. And in a skin sparing or a nipple sparing mastectomy, we actually keep the envelope. Right. And in a skin sparing, we take out the nipple, but we keep the rest of the envelope. So it spares the skin only. And, and in the nipple sparing, it spares also the nipple. So um, tell us what are the types of incisions for either the skin sparing or the nipple sparing mastectomy? Okay, so for those um, surgeries, actually the type of incisions that you're gonna have depends on the discussion between your surgeon, your plastic surgeon, and yourself. The first thing we need to consider is where your tumor is situated because your breast surgeon will want to make sure to be able to get to it and remove it totally. Uh, we also consider what type of breast you want to have afterwards, like what is your expectation of the result of the reconstruction and uh, what the plastic surgeon needs to make as an incision to be able to achieve that result. Excellent. Right? So for the mastectomy, uh, so can you explain to us how is the surgery done? So the surgery is actually either a day surgery 
or an overnight surgery, but mm -hmm. you rarely stay much longer than that. Mm -hmm. So on the morning of the surgery, you go to the OR, the surgeon makes the incision, removes um, the breast, and then depending on if you have a reconstruction or mm -hmm. not, a plastic surgeon might come in right. to actually do the reconstruction. Right. So in terms of length of surgery, uh, it really depends on what you have yeah. chosen, and it also depends on your morphology. Absolutely. And so the, the operation is done under general anesthesia, of course. Exactly. Okay. With or without um, any uh, axillary surgery at the same time, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Yes. Okay. Um, so, what are the risks and complications of the mastectomy? So, the risks and complications of, of a mastectomy are slightly larger than the ones of a lumpectomy, but they're quite similar, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's still the breast. Right. But because your um, dissection surface is a bit bigger, you have a high risk of bleeding and you have a higher risk of infection. Mm -hmm. The other thing that people need to remember is that in the case of a nipple sparing or a skin sparing mastectomy, Sometimes during the dissection, we may jeopardize the blood flow to the skin. Mm -hmm. And what happens in, that, in those moments is that you may have what we call flap necrosis. Right. That is actually quite a big complication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in case of a reconstruction. Right, definitely, because there is... Uh, the implant is a foreign body that we place under the tissue, and so if there is poor blood flow to the skin, it can certainly increase risks of... Uh, heal, you know, healing problems um, and also infection as well. Um, but there are devices, thankfully, that we can use in the operating room to assess the blood flow, and we'll talk about that uh, in, in another, another video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a big, it's a pretty big topic. Okay. Um, so I think we've covered pretty much everything about um, the mastectomy. So um, I hope you really enjoyed the video on uh, discussing all the, the breast surgeries. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to leave them in the comment box below um, and we will definitely answer them. And if uh, there's a lot of uh, things that you are wondering about, we can also do another video. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And remember to join us next week because next week we will talk about the axilla. Absolutely.